Well, good morning and good morning, Eve. Um, good morning. Susan, if you'd want to um, introduce yourself and your position and then uh, and your colleague and then um, and mute your phones, then we'll be able to proceed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <clears> hey, <throat> okay, good morning, commissioners and Jamie. I'm Susan Eberly, president of the Lebanon Valley Economic Development Corporation. And with me today is Eve Beemansterfer, my business specialist. And we will present where we're at with our CHIRP funding at this point. Uh, we've come a long way since February 18th when Jamie asked me if we could submit a, a proposal to the commissioners. Uh, we had that draft agreement uh, signed by our deadline of March 1st, so that was very timely. And then we had to start creating the guidelines and the application and uh, the website. So we're, we are moving along rather rapidly and we're very pleased with the uh, movement that has happened so far. Uh, we have gathered 43 applications. Uh, we have a little over 1.7 million in requests. We started to, uh, we're in a, pretty far along with um, reviewing the applications, scoring the applications, and we will be presenting them to the loan committee next Wednesday. Uh, Joellen, you'll be pleased to know that we uh, um, applied for a fictitious name and we received that. So thank you thank for you. that heads up. Uh, our attorney thought it was a great idea to uh, put that in place as well. Um, Susan, excuse me, could you just, uh, the acronym, for, could you just give what CHIRP is? Yeah, it's the hospi um, Hospitality Industry, wait, now I'm so used to calling it CHIRP. Recovery, <laughs> Recovery Program. Program. <laughs> Recovery Program, yeah. Uh, I usually like to use the formal name and um, just got in the habit with this one. Uh, because of well, the public's interest, yes. Yep, Thank definitely, you. definitely. Uh, we did advertise by radio, TV, social media, and our community uh, counterparts help advertise the program as well. We held a, a virtual um, meeting with Jen Cuso, and we were able to share the program guidelines. And like I said, thus far, we received 43 applications, which total over the 1.65 million that's available. Um, so I'm going to ask Eve to go through, you know, some of the applica the applications and um, where she's at with scoring and um, just your update, Eve. Okay. You, do you want to share screen, Eve, or do you want me? I actually have the list you sent I can put up. Uh, how would you, if you want to? I don't need to share a screen. If I can just talk about it a little bit, I think mm -hmm. that would be okay. And if you can feel free to ask questions along the way. Um, we received our first application uh, March 15th in the morning, and they've been coming through pretty steady throughout initially that we got quite a few the first day. They've been slowing down here uh, more recently, but we have gone through all of the applications that have been submitted. They have all been reviewed for completeness, and each company has been contacted directly with any questions that we may have, um, any additional documents that we might need that maybe they didn't put through correctly. Um, but we're doing our best to reach out and, and contact each company and help them through the process, as well as um, you see through on the sheet, a lot of companies ask for the maximum amount. So we're in the process now of comparing documents and verifying what funding they have previously received and identifying the expenses that they um, have incurred since last March 1st, 2020 through the date of application. And they have to identify um, which programs they got funding from which expenses have already been covered by those programs and which eligible expenses they are asking for the CHIRP program to reimburse. Um, so that communication is happening right now. Um, we have, I'd say about a third of the applications are complete. They've all gone through a preliminary scoring, um, but we are waiting on verification we don't want it to be where somebody just applies for an amount. They have to actually prove 
that those expenses have not been funded already and that they are valid expenses. Um, with that being said, we, we wanna be able to help each business um, to the maximum amount possible. Um, we have, as Susan said, we've received about 1.7 in funding requests so far. Those are not approved amounts, those are requested amounts. So till we go through everything and justify the actual expenses, um, I'm sure that number will come down a little bit and we may have room for um, some more applicants, um, but it'll take a little bit of time to review. May, may just ask, what's the uh, deadline for applications? The last we're able to receive applications is June 15th or whenever the funds are exhausted, whichever comes first. Hmm. I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if, you know, you get more in uh, if we, if everything that you have so far has been vetted and so on, um, and we have not enough money, would there be a chance of taking a, a percentage of you know, uh, to, to spread the money over the number of, of, of applicants that, that were, um, you know, approved, even though you, you know, you may not give 100% of what they're eligible for. I think we did that with the second round um, in the CARES money. Uh, just a thought, but I, I don't know if you've, if the your requests have tailed off and if that, you, you know, you have what you uh, um, feel is, is going to be the uh, end of the applications. Um, now we'll have to, I guess, play it out to see, but um, it, it's limited funds on this round. So I just didn't know what your thoughts were about, you know, accepting more applications beyond the funding. Yeah, Eve and I were going to have an executive committee meeting about that today and discuss that if we wanted to put a hold on the application, applicants coming in uh, until these were finally all scored and had that dollar amount or if we want to keep the application period open with rolling, they're really rolling in at maybe one application per day. The majority of the applicants were in in the first two weeks. Uh, so we need to make that determination. Until we um, make that determination, we wouldn't be able to put the money out to the businesses if we're going to end up doing a prorated um, program, which will yeah. maybe hurt some of the businesses that are sitting there waiting for the funds yes. to come in. Yeah, yeah, that is the downside of that. Yes, I, I agree with that. So, okay, Jamie. I could just make a, uh, a recommendation on that issue. Um, I, you know, I would certainly still receive their application and their information because we don't yet know uh, how all of that American Rescue Act funding is going to be dispersed. We're still waiting for some guidance on that as a county. So, you know, if you've got uh, information and, and need in hand, uh, there may come a time that we can fall back to that. Good point. That's a good point. That's a good point. Okay. I know most of our counterparts throughout South Central Region, uh, they closed their application process. They, uh, uh, they had an overwhelming amounts before um, in, the in the first two weeks. And I think what we have been seeing with the applications is, you know, a lot of these restaurants and hotels were doing great pre-COVID. And then when that one quarter, when the mandatory closing was in, there was a dip, but we have such resiliency in the county. Uh, their financials are showing that after that quarter, majority of them bounced back uh, in the third and fourth quarter of, of 2020. And even some earn more money than they had previously earned. So I just think that speaks volumes for the people in Lebanon County supporting uh, the businesses out there. Well, I, I, it's obvious the word's gotten out, but, you know, probably a lot of word of mouth among the industry too when this, when this came out, but it's, um, it'll be unfortunate for some, but it's good to see that, that uh, the, the word got to them and they got their applications in, it sounds like. So yeah, I, I would still, uh, you know, keep collecting them. Obviously you can't make any promises to them, but uh, if we have some sort of uh, known need, we can maybe put money out there from the American Rescue. Again, guidance is still pending, but we will see. I think a lot of the businesses uh, fine tune their skills at takeout and that really probably helped them along. 
Anything else uh, for the good? If not, excellent report. Thank you both. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. You're, you're welcome. And we'll be glad to help in any way we can moving forward. Just reach out to us. Thank you. Bye-bye.